name is Scott McDonald. I'm the chef of Modioc Kerry Three. Today, what we're going to cook is a old traditional dish, French. I'm going to take some beef spare ribs, braise them slowly. Now, this dish is very home style and very traditional to France. But what we're going to do is take an old-fashioned dish and make it elegant. So today, we're going to start with the beef spare ribs. Now the reason why I chose this dish is because it's you're utilizing cheap cuts and you make it into an absolutely beautiful, elegant dish that will impress anybody. Okay, so to start with, we need to get our beef ribs and season them properly. So you coat them with your salt. And just make sure that you turn them all around and get them all covered in salt the whole way through. Otherwise, when you're cooking it, you won't get the caramel on the outside of the meat and the seasoning will not develop throughout this cooking process. Now for this dish I'm trying, I'm using white pepper instead of black, just to keep the peppering more mild. Once you've seasoned your meat, you need to start flouring, flouring them quite quickly, otherwise it will start to draw moisture out of the meat as the salt starts cooking it. One essential trick when you're flouring meat is to, you're always going to have too much flour on, so always have a spare board on the side to uh, knock off any excess flour. As we're getting ready to seal the meat, we also have to have uh, other things ready and available. So normally when we are braising meats like this, traditionally when you're eating them at home, you know, this type of dish is, everybody gathers around for the whole day and, and it cooks for a long time. So, so the whole family is waiting in anticipation for it to be ready because the smell is consuming the household. Now the difference between this dish of how we're going to do it elegantly is that all of the vegetables are going to be cooked separately from the... So the first task of making this traditional dish elegant is that we need to separate out the overcooked vegetables that are going to be in the broth. And how we're going to obtain this is so we're going to have all of our normal aromats inside the pan without losing any of the flavour. So inside the pan we're putting carrots, bay leaves, leeks, onions, garlic and fresh thyme. To that we have our red wine reduction. So always when you're making a red wine reduction be very careful that you don't just reduce red wine in a pan. You need to add for one bottle of red wine, which this is, one cup of onions, one cup of carrots, one cup of mushrooms, some garlic, some herbs, and then you need to reduce it. The most important part about the reduction of red wine is the mushrooms. Without it, you're gonna keep the red wine far too sharp and it's not gonna mellow itself out. So inside of our pan here, we put our red wine reduction. And then one and a half liters of beef stock. How we're going to keep our meat separate from the vegetables is we're going to line the top of the vegetables with a muslin cloth so that our braise can still steam the meat, 
but keeping the vegetables and the aromats separate while still utilizing all of the flavor. Okay, so now our pan is hot and ready. So always when you're sealing the meat, you can always test the pan with your with the front side of your hand. Make sure you always have the fresh heat there and always use ex uh, olive oil, not extra virgin. The best way to test that the pan is ready and hot, your oil should be able to move loosely and you'll see lines in the oil. So as we place our beef in, what we need to do is get a seal on all four sides of the, of the beef. So always when you're sealing meat, never ever keep working the pan. What you're waiting for is the caramelization of the meat. So your salt is drawing out the moisture of the meat and the natural sugars of the beef is caramelizing in the pan. When you can start smelling the beef flavor coming out of the pan, then you know when to turn it. So as the beef comes out of the oven, you should be able to tell that all four corners of the beef are glowing with caramelization. Now all we need to do is take these pieces out and place them in the top of our muslin cloth. Nice and neatly. And even. Now always when you're cooking meat, people always tend to put things too close together. If everything is stacked together, you can't get the heat anywhere. So make sure everything is kept separate so that all of the heat can circulate and everything comes out perfectly even. So now, depending on what type of pan you have, it is much better recommended if you have a, do have a higher roasting pan because when you do put aluminium on top of meat, the metal can get stuck to the meat. So as a precaution, I'm just going to put some baking paper on top of the meat just to make sure that we don't stick. Now our foil will get On, nice and slight. So the idea with the alfoil is always have the shiny side facing down. The shining side is going to make sure that the heat stays inside the pan and also when we get that liquid hot it needs to start reducing itself by itself to, to make our finished sauce. So now our lid is nice and tight going to place it into an oven at 180 degrees, which is quite high for a braising temperature. So that goes in, and then we'll be ready in an hour and a half. Carrot sauce. First of all, to keep our vegetables sweet and fresh, let's cook everything that we're going to do together with itself. So to cook our carrots today, we're going to cook them in fresh carrot juice. So first we just juice the carrots into our pan.
this process of doing carrots, you can use it for a lot of dishes. You can spice this up by putting cardamom into the carrot juice. You can spice it up by putting saffron in there. Or even fresh ginger juice to be added to the carrot as well. So once we have our juice, we're going to reduce this on high heat for 10 minutes until it's an excessive heat baby. So whilst this has been reducing for 10 minutes, we haven't skimmed any kind of particles off from the top. So whilst it's reducing, you see that the bubbles start to become quite thick, and then we remove it. So right now, it looks like a mess, but we're going to bring this back together and emulsify in some butter. Bring the carrot back together. Pour it into a the right sized vessel. Now to be able to blend this back together because it's really such a small amount, you need to do it in a container that will be able to blend it and emulsify it well. So here we're using the smallest measuring cup that I have. Now we're just going to give this a blend just while it's by itself just to put all of the thick parts of the carrot back with the reduced juice. Now, always with any emulsion sauce, the slower you emulsify the fat in it, the better the sauce is going to hold. So we cut all of the butter into small little pieces and we blend again to emulsify. So to enhance our vegetables for this dish, what we're going to do is we're going to sous vide them and cook them in a water bath. So what I've already done here is peeled four baby carrots and I've left everything on. Just remember to make sure when you do peel baby carrots that these do come straight out of the ground. So just get a small knife and run it around there just to remove all of the dirt. Now, this style of cooking is not uh, scary at all. It actually takes away a lot of the guesswork from cooking and it makes presentation and the ability to cook something well a lot easier. So inside the bag we've got our carrots and our carrot emulsion. Now by vacuum packing this, this is going to ensure that the sweetness of our sauce is going to be pushed directly inside of the vegetables. vegetables that are going to complement this dish are all of the same vegetables that are being cooked with the meat. So here we have our carrots and carrot juice and here we have some leek rounds in extra virgin olive oil and salt. Now we're going to take these and put them in our water bath here. So what we're doing is we're circulating water around the pot and maintaining it at 85 degrees. So this is going to cook for one hour. So our beef and our vegetables will be ready at the same time. Perfect mashed potato. So on our stove here, I've had boiling gently is whole peeled potatoes. Now, there is a huge wrong myth about making mashed potato. So every time you cut the potato, you're removing starch and your mashed potato is not going to hold together better than if you did cut them. So they're cooked whole 
perfectly cooked. We remove the water and we place these in the oven for four minutes. Once your potatoes have been in the oven for four minutes, they're going to start to dry out. Now drying out is what we need because we're going to incorporate butter and milk into the potatoes. So when the potatoes are looking for moisture, that's when they're going to absorb the best. So we take them out. We run them through the mooly. Now always with potatoes you have to work very, very quickly. The slower you work and the colder the potatoes get, the more gluey are they going to become. If you're only doing a small amount like we are today, you don't really have any trouble. But if you start doing large amounts for large groups of people, you have to work very, very quickly. Once you have your first stage of mash, then we're going to take it to a drum sieve here. What we're going to do is just push it through and make sure that we don't have any more little uh, lumps. Now, I'm very passionate about this because, you know, my mum's mashed potato was horrible. Okay, pickled onions. So, for any type of pickling liquid, this is just a basic simple one. So you have 200 grams of water, 100 sugar, and 100 of your vinegar of choice. So for the onions for this dish, I'm just keeping with the French theme and using champagne vinegar. Now you can also spice your pickling liquor with any kind of herbs or spices or anything at all. Today we're using mustard seeds and bay leaves. So to complement the dish we're using red and white pearl onions. First of all when you do the onions you need to peel them nicely, put them in a little pot, cold water, bring them to the boil, simmer them slowly and just as they're cooked remove them from the water, refresh them and put them into a hot pickling brine. So these onions have been sitting in here for about two hours now and have had the full flavor of the pickling liquid. The advantage of using a pickled onion instead of uh, confit or anything else, first of all, with rich heavy meats like we're doing this evening, this is gonna help break down with the acid of the vinegar break down the richness of the meat and also because of the meat is also very gelatinous because we're cooking it with the bone it's going to help digestion with the, with the dish as well but also because of the sugar and the vinegar you also obtain an amazing glaze on the top of the onions onions done okay so for this dish because the mushrooms have been in the sauce and so we're going to bring them onto the plate as well. Today we're just using small Swiss brown mushrooms. Now, compared to anything else that's going on the dish, they're actually quite large. So to pan fry them nice and neatly and have them fully cooked through without roasting them in the oven, I've just scored them lightly so that the heat reaches the center, the mushrooms are perfectly cooked, and they're not falling apart on the plate because they've been in the oven. So our vegetables have been in the circulator for an hour now. Let's remove them. Okay. So the other magnificent thing about the circulator is, normally with this sauce, it would be split. But because we're cooking at a low temperature and not breaking it apart, the sauce holds itself together and has been directed inside the vegetables. Now to dress them, very simple. Open the bag. 
pour your vegetables and the sauce into a small bowl. Finish with some fresh herbs. And we're done. Now for the legs. Leaves will come out. Open your bag. Now the leeks are already dressed, so all we have to do is open the bag and tip them out. Now we're ready to plate. Okay, so now our beef is ready. So just be careful always when you're removing the tin foil because unless you have a proper lid, there will be a lot of steam inside of the pouch. So the first thing that you're looking for when these come out of the oven is that the meat should be slightly springy to touch and tender and or falling off the bone. Good. Okay. So the portion of beef for this dish is very simple. The meat's already falling off the boat, so to present it neatly, we'll cut it. Now our meat's ready. So now we're ready to plate.
I broke the lease. Pickled onions. Now the beautiful thing about these pickled onions also is, once they've been pickled, it's very easy to separate them and get beautiful leaves out, which we can complement the dish with. Then our sauce. So what we've done today is we've taken a classical piece of meat, normally cooked at home with a family, and turned it into an amazingly unique, elegant dish. So. What's so special about the dish is we have beautifully braised beef, the sauce has been reduced from the beef and nothing has been lost. All of the garnish is a part of the cooking of the beef and all we've done is revamped it and put it back on the plate. Pickled onions break down the beef beautifully, the sweetness of the carrots cooked in its own carrot juice, perfect whipped mashed potatoes, sautéed mushrooms and broccoli for freshness and the leeks really make the beef stand out. So I hope that people at home can give this a try and uh, see how you go. Thank you.